know who that young lady is right there? Everybody know her name? Kelly, do you know her? No. Oh. Blanca. Her name's Blanca. She, mm -hmm. no, I'm just kidding. No. Monica. Yep. yep, she's a manager at McDonald's Hi. down the street. So, I'm not a manager, <laughs> but she, this is Kelly. She's the mother of two children. Oh my God. Married to a really handsome guy. Away. <laughs> and I think everybody else knows everybody else. So this is Kim and you know everybody. Um, we have been on a topic, uh, well it's topics over the last few months. And the last one we've been studying was evil. And I don't know if you guys are tired of it yet or not. Josh certainly is. Tired of talking about evil. Kim, you love it, huh? It's interesting. It's interesting. I've been getting a little bit, like, weary. I mean, I don't know what it is. Like, a little bit, um... Like a weird... Bleh. You know, whenever I think about it, or you think, oh, another... We're going to do another class on it or something. Um, and I think I know why. I think I know why. Does it make you feel uncomfortable? Two things. I think it makes me feel uncomfortable. And it makes me really think about maybe I'm the problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, um, I, I think, <laughs> I think when we talk about evil, it's hard to look at the situation without seeing ourselves in it. And I think I think I'm starting to understand that I'm part of the problem. And today, um, that's kind of what I want to talk about. Uh, we've talked about a lot of stuff, maybe like the origination. Where did it come from? And do we, do we have still, dis I'm sure we still have made disagreements on it. But do you guys have any... Um, I was going to say questions, but you guys all, all have an idea of where evil originated. We can just ask a few people just to get some ideas. Maybe we'll start with Ke Kelly. You weren't here. Where do you think evil originated? Where did it come from? Miriam wasn't here. We went over this long before, like... Well, we went over it again. You weren't here oh. the last time. But go ahead. Give us your thoughts. Where did evil come from? Ooh. Shout out. Spam caller. It's okay. Uh, Kelly. Um, the origination of evil. From Satan before he got cast down the. Or out of heaven. All right. So you said it originated with Satan. Um, when he, before he got cast out of heaven. Origin. All right. That's when we spent about two. Two weekends discussing the origin. We had a little debate. Josh was pretty heated on his side. He had thoughts. And then Kimberly was heated on her side. She had thoughts. And they fleshed it out with the whole team. Um, and we came out to two conclusions. That one of them is wrong. You know, so nobody wants to admit it, but one of them has got to be wrong. Uh, <clears throat> Monica, any thoughts? Uh, where, the, where the origin of evil came. I'm not sure. All right. Yeah, so she's still working through it. Uh, she was on the side of that God actually created evil. She had to debate that. It wasn't a choice. She had to debate it. So she's still working through it, which is fine. I mean, that's what we're here to do. Um, Carla, any thoughts? Origin of evil? You want to let some out of that? I think it was maybe like a byproduct of God's own creation. For every action, there needs to be an equal and opposite reaction. So for creating good, evil had to. Okay. We have disagreements. All right. <clears throat> so we talked about that. We talked about the origin of Satan. You know, where did he come from? Uh, was he an angel? Was he created by God wicked already? 
and maybe there's disagreements there too. Uh, I know even with our pastor we have some disagreements on some of those things, but <laughs> there's disagreements. But besides all of that, you know, I've been thinking about, okay, we studied all this theological stuff. What is the point? Why? Why? You know, why even, what, what does it benefit you at all to know where evil came from or where it originated? What benefit to us does it have at all? And there's two things. One, we originally started with a question. If God is good, then how could he do that? And we wanted to uncover the truth. We want to dig in and try to find out, is there really an answer for skeptics, for people who say God actually has skeletons in his closet? The devil's actually his stepson. He didn't like him. So he made him evil, and now he's terrorizing the rest of us. God's design. Uh, and now, you know, and this, so that it just goes to, to make God look like he um, has double standards, and he's... Uh, you know, some of the things he says aren't true, so are phony, stuff like that. So that, that was the first thing, but the second thing I think was to bring us back to reality, is that um, maybe some of us, like for, maybe for myself for the last long time, we've maybe lived a lifestyle that's been a little bit sheltered from all this evil. Uh, I think that, I know that God has been like, I feel like Job, in a way, to where God has been covering us from it. You know, we haven't experienced major tragedies or wickedness in my family. It hasn't, we haven't experienced it. And I do feel like maybe, jo you know, that like devil was mad at God. You know, the only reason why he loves you is because you're protecting him. You know, and, and I feel like that we're in that state to where God is protecting us from all that, because I haven't experienced too much, and maybe some of you have more than I, or more than others, I don't know. So I think there's, a, the thing I want to end with today is, I think the important reason why we studied it is not to answer our critics, but also to realize it's reality. To realize it's that it's actually real. Maybe you don't see it today in this little box we're in, but out in this huge world, it's there. And even if you can't see it, he's probably sitting right next to you, one of you guys, you know? Who knows? Uh, one of those evil spirits probably just right there massaging your neck and you don't even know about it. Just saying, wait till you get outside, you know, or something. Um, who knows? Who knows? But I, it's a matter of opening up our eyes to the reality of it, of evil, in the world and in our lives. It's opening up our, the uh, reality of it. So today, today that's what I want to do. Uh, I know that we've studied all of its theological implications. But let's just end with looking at it from an interior point of view. Um, the world and, and inside of us and how, what are, what are we going to do about it? And that's kind of the conclusion I want to come with is what are we going to do about it? This evil that uh, is amongst us. And anybody remember what the definition of evil is? Anybody? The definition of evil. If you were to define it, Steve, if you are going to define it, what would you say? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. He doesn't have much experience with it. He's a good guy. What's evil? Anybody? David, thoughts? You don't know either? Hey, guys. You're not that perfect. Just a wild guess. Kelly, any idea what evil could be? Even if you said something, anything, nasty or... <laughs> Murder. It could be Sick. Murder. It could be uh, doing something to, like if you don't like someone and you're doing something, like say you don't like your coworker 
when you're doing something to interfere with their work, I think that's part of evil. Like, it doesn't sound like a big deal or sound like a minor Hurting like, somebody problem. else? Yeah, like, their intentions is their intentions. Yeah, okay. So hurting somebody, um, causing other people harm. Or um, trouble, yeah. I think it's really that, actually, exactly. And uh, I don't have the actual definition that we wrote down, wrote down last time, but it was um, obedience towards God, obedience for His moral laws or His, uh, His standards, disobeying that, disobeying what God has said. Because the last class we talked about is there really is no standard of good and wrong if God doesn't exist. There's no, there's, there's no way to measure other than your own, your own preference and your own perspectives, if if God's uh, author, authority, his if His law doesn't exist, and we know it exists in all of us, because we all know that for some reason murder is wrong. We just I don't know why you, you just know it uh, from a little person and from looking at um, Nate people all over the world. That's wrong everywhere. Um, except in Germany for a portion of time. Um, so, I want you guys to turn with me, if you could, to Ephesians 2. And I just want to look at a few things in here. <clears throat> so, recognizing the reality of evil in our world. Anybody think it doesn't exist? This wickedness, wicked devil? Um, anybody have, you know... Think, do you think he's working today? Wicked. The, the origin, the, the originator of evil, the evil himself. Did he wake up to work today? Possibly. So I think that's what we got to think about is uh, the reality of evil. Is it, is it real today? So... There's a verse in here I want to just read. Uh, Sam, if you're already there, if you wouldn't mind. If you can read uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Oh, sure. Thank you. All right. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which, in which he once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. All right. So once, oh, there was a different different version. Uh, sorry, I lost you. Once we were dead in our chests and sins, and you used to live in sin like the rest of the world. All right, so let's say this is the world. All right, we have little places. This is where Josh is from over here. And uh, the rest of us are... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the world, the entirety of it, every human being on the planet. And according to that verse, somebody's in control of the whole thing. All right. Somebody has authority over this whole planet. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commanders of the powers in the unseen world. All right, so a commander of the powers of the unseen world devil commands the powers of unseen world all right what uh, a part a word that sticks out to me is this this word unseen sounds like uh, if you didn't know he was there, you would never know that he was there. If you didn't have, if you didn't learn about it, you would never know. There's somebody 
commanding or directing the, the evil in the unseen world. So today, I think we have to, we have to either come to the grip, come to the reality of whether that is true or not. And uh, is there any evidence of it? Any evidence that he's actually commanding the powers of the unseen world? And when we think of these powers and relating to him, it's probably not like godly powers, Holy Spirit kind of stuff. It's got to be all these evil spirits because he's the commander of those, like we learned the last time. Any evidence that he is working in this world, or is this a lie? Is he really not the commander? Any evidence? Uh, Elmer in the back? Any evidence that the devil is commanding the unseen powers of this world? None. I could tell you some right now. Some kid in class didn't want to give up his phone. Yeah. You wonder. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. Anybody else? I just want you to prove to me that he is real. That that guy is controlling this world. Prisons. Who? Prisons. Ugh. Prisons. Dang. That's a good one. I didn't think of that. All right. We got a prison here. We got a prison here. Prison here, all prison every over. County. <laughs> every county has prisons. And what do prisons do? Contain evil people. Awesome. Try to. All right. So there's little bars and castles that contain people who've done something evil to harm other people or break the law. Kim may know. Kim, what do you think? Is there is there a lot of people in there who just kind of let evil take over? A lot. A lot. So maybe that's why we don't see it, because they got them all locked up. I don't know. Even, even then, inside they still fight. Even inside, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Shoot, girl, you're hit. That's a good one. Okay. So maybe one, one area to show that he's commanding this unseen world is prisons. Something we're sheltered from, unless you've been there, like Josh. <laughs> you haven't? Oh, uh, sorry. Um, all right, well, anything else? <clears throat> Any evidence that he is actually evil, the commander of it, is controlling a lot of this activity? Nothing? Uh, war. War! Man! Look at this. All right, not only do we have prisons, but we got wars going on all over the place. All right, fighting these guys over here. All right, these guys shooting missiles over here. Boom, boom. Wars all over the place. Killing for reasons I don't know. Uh, we know in Africa that there's these militia that just go around just destroying people for no reason. They take all the women, rape them, kill the kids, uh, kill all the men, uh, take some of them to be their warriors, and then it's crazy, all right? But we, you know, we don't see that happening here. That's way over on this side of the world. I mean, this side of the world, that it's occurring. <laughs> all right, anything else? Shouldn't be that hard to come up with stuff. Chips, give me something. What evidence that he's in the commanding a good chunk of this world? Um, all the people that are not in church. All the people who are not in church. All right. And maybe it's the worship leader's fault. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, okay, so not in church. All right. So we have churches all over the world. Little churches all over. And. Uh, not a lot of people want to go. Maybe because homeboy here is preventing them. All right, anybody else? Everybody's gonna have to give me something. We gotta move Human through this. You're about time somebody <laughs> says it. <I> human <laughs> trafficking. You know what, everybody know what human trafficking is. It's when people get outside direct traffic for the rest of the freeways. <laughs> oh my God, Robert. <laughs> no, that's not what it is. 
It's actually a sick, it's actually a sick practice which is occurring all over the world where they're taking, even in San Jose, I just was talking to somebody about it, they had little young girls prostituting out there um, at night. And I, you know, I don't know if they're doing it willingly or voluntarily, but all over the world they take young girls and enslave them, make them sex slaves for profit, and um, some of them die in it. You know, it's just totally, they're, they're enslaved, it's, they're being trafficked, uh, and it's happening all over. It's sick, you know, who, to do that, but I wonder why, you know, that somebody's in control of all of this. Murder? David, any ideas now? Anything at your work that happens that's crazy? Not a thing! Nobody shows up drunk or... Oh, yeah. Well, come on! Oh, that's no big deal. I wonder, you know? Okay, maybe that's an issue. All right? Evidence that he's in command of it. Yeah, like I said, you could, there's rapes occurring, there's thievery occurring, there's uh, deceit, deception, there's um, people are using people. You know, it's, just, it's, it's crazy all that's happening. New laws passing. Laws? New, New laws, laws pa passing, like gender X. In the government? Yeah. Okay, so it's, he's not only underground, he's actually working high up in governments and stuff like that. So I think we just have to take a step back and look at us on this planet and realize there's a lot of crazy stuff going on all because there's somebody commanding the unseen world and he's actually really evil and he's really trying to take it over and God is allowing him space to do that for reasons we don't know um, but that's point number one. Taken to reality, outside of this little box we're in, maybe that bigger box, there's a whole world of unseen evil. And like I said, it could be right, he could be right around here, one of these demon spirits could be listening to our conversation today. Doesn't make any difference, but he's there. It exists. It exists. Where it came from, we have different, maybe different beliefs, but we can all agree that it's here. Okay, that's first. All right? It's not only there, but it's actually in here. Ugh. Somehow, not, not necessarily the devil, but evil. All right, it's not only all over this whole world, it's actually in that little guy right there. In him. And how many of these little guys are on that planet? Anybody know? I have no idea. Actually. I think there's like six billion. Six billion little evil guys. All over the planet. Ugh. All of these people have the potential to be... <laughs> to um, perform acts of evil. All of them. Every single one of us has an inclination to do it. We have that inclination to do it. In Ephesians 2, 1, it said, Once you were dead in your, because of your disobedience and your many sins. All right? So Paul was saying, once you guys, he was speaking to people at church, believers, once you guys were there, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the heart of those who refuse to obey God. He's at work in the hearts. So think about people we know who reject the gospel or don't want to come to it. There's a reason why. He is working in the heart, preventing. All right, he's stopping it. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature, by our very nature we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Alright, so I need to ask you guys something personal. At one time in your life, would you consider yourself to be one of those people? Would you, at one time in your existence up till now, would you ever have categorized yourself to be one of those where it says that the devil... He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to disobey. All of us used to live that way, 
following the passionate desires of our inclinations and of our sinful natures. Yes. Josh? Yeah. I can vouch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. Used to. to. Admit it. You know, it would. Does anyone care to admit it? Or would you guys all say that you popped out of your mother holy as ever? Steve? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You used to be? All right. So we used to be part of this people here that used to be driven by our passionate desires, our evil inclinations. I wonder if Monica was ever that way. Do you ever feel like you're... Not so much? Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't think it's to where we need to be like out, like just crazy, like you should have sent that person to prison. But did you ever do anything you felt was wrong? You just, and you liked it or something. I don't know if you liked it or not. I just, I don't know. Carla denies it, says never. <laughs> I know her and I can, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. But I think that's important for all of us to understand is that if we weren't controlled by the Spirit of God, we were controlled by the Spirit of the enemy. You know, we were being controlled by Him. Sin held us captive. We, we, weren't, we weren't free. We weren't born free. That's not how it was. Uh, I want to read another verse, or maybe you know it off head. Matthew 6, uh, 13. It's part of uh, the Our Father. Uh, in, the, in the prayer, Our Father, what does it say? Our Father... Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those trespasses against us. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from what? Why would we have to pray that? I was thinking about that. Why would that be important to pray? Maybe for us as Christians. Thoughts. Deliver us <clears throat> from evil. Are we good? Born born. Okay, Mari? Because the devil tempt, will try to tempt Jesus, the living word of God. So if he himself was tempted, what would make us think that we wouldn't be? All and right. if he, being the living word of God, was able to... Um, cast him out using the word of God as an example for us to do the same when the devil comes around. Alright. So if if Jesus was susceptible to being tempted or tried by the devil, why not us? Alright? What makes us so special that he wouldn't try to take us down? Or maybe we're not that special. Man, who cares about that? Ain't going to do anything for God anyways. <laughs> so, you know? Or I don't know. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not to, to temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. It's important to pray. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Because it exists... You know, we, maybe we think we're Christian now, I'm untouchable. It exists and you can't do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, from the Ephesians we read that that's how we used to be, but Jesus set us free. I don't know if we read that part yet, actually. But it still has power. We're still walking in this world where evil has power, and, and it can still operate in our lives. Even I feel it sometimes. You know, it's like, wow, what the heck? Why do I want to do that? You know, it's this nasty flesh we have. Even though some of us have really attractive flesh, but it's still nasty. You know, it just wants to do stuff that's wrong. And that's, you know, the Bible just gives it all to the flesh. Is that it's a craving thing, and it likes. You know, the devil's so successful because we like it for some reason. We like what he has to offer, even though it kills us. Um, so, we have to realize that it's in our lives that we were once like that. And I think it's important when we think about that, okay, so maybe I am inclined to evil. Maybe I used to be this way, uh, and God is changing me. Um, and we've been on the subject of skeletons in God's closet. 
I mean, that's kind of what we've been talking about. Is there really? And we have another one we're going to be talking about next. But I think we have to realize that we are the ones with skeletons in our closet. I, I was thinking about that this week. It's No, it's not God. It's me. I'm the one who's got these. And the, and the skeleton is that we this this is in us. It's just it's this um, it's this choice we constantly make. It's a choice we constantly make to ruin what God wants to do, and uh, God is working through it. Um, and I want to read this verse to you. It's on James chapter one, verse twenty one. James 1.21 And it says, uh, So get rid of all filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has a power to save your souls. Is it possible for you to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus, and still have evil and filth? Filth in your life. Yep. It is. It is. Should it be that way? No. So the verse, what James is trying to say is that take a good look at yourself and clean out the closet. Clean it out. Alright? We all know that there's evil. We all know we are susceptible. Not one of us is more holy than the next. You know, we're we're the goal is for us to be at church and to be even a little group like we are young adults is to help each other out. Um, so if some of us need to get a broom and just open the door and just help you sweep it a little bit, we need to do that. But a lot of us won't let anybody in. We say, no, 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 don't touch my doorknob. Don't even come near it. This is my house. And But the, the issue is that we can still have these nasty, rotten skeletons in our own closet. You know, and we're, uh, this evil is allowing room for him to work. That's, I, I believe that's his doorway. You know, the devil, his doorway to come in and do what he needs to do is when we have evil, when we harbor it in our lives. And uh, it gives him room to mess things up bad. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is... And we'll close it with this is, um, I think it's got, it gets a little depressing when you think about this. Okay, the devil controls the whole world. We got prisons everywhere, every county. How many counties we have? Who the heck knows? But they're beyond counties. They got them on boats in the ocean. They got one little island in San Francisco. They got them everywhere, prisons. And we're trying to contain all this evil. Keep it over there, keep it here. Uh, but it's it's just everywhere. It's crazy. So what hope do we have? My gosh, you know all this wickedness. Even in churches, you know we know we've mentioned it you know, over and over again. But you know priests and you know molesting. You know not even priests, Christian pastors. You know doing that little kids and stuff like that. It's it's even in the churches. So what the heck? There's not a place you can go where it's not going to be. Um, it's crazy. So what hope do we have? Uh, Ephesians 2, 4-6. Um, do you have it, Kim? Oh, you don't have it. Anybody have it? Ephesians 2, 4-6. Ephesians what? 2, 4-6. Yeah. Go ahead. Read again. Uh, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when he, we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All right, so after Paul gives us this sad story about our existence and the existence of the world and the state of the world, but... God was so rich in mercy that He loved us. that even when we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. So I think looking at all this evil, all the murders, all the, all the prisons, all the rapes, all the human trafficking, all the thievery, all the 
corruption, but God was rich in mercy. When Christ rose from the dead, he gave us life. And it is it gets deep, but I think that in simple terms is that we were we were enslaved to that guy. And when he rose from the dead, he gave us the power to break the chains and to be set free. And now I don't have to be controlled by evil any longer. Maybe here and there I start drifting towards it. But I'm not controlled by it any longer. And I'm not serving him any longer. I got a new master. And that's what he's trying to tell us. The power and authority that we've been given is that one is that you've had the power to say no. You know? I think anybody in jail, Kim, you might know that they don't really have any rights. They just do whatever, you have to do whatever the warden says or the officers say, hey, uh, time for bed. Like, well, what am I going to do? I'm in prison. And that's kind of how it is with us, where we used to be. Maybe some of you don't remember. Maybe, I don't even know if I remember. Shoot. That whenever the devil said, hey, uh, time to go hit somebody or time to go steal uh, something or time to look at this, and you would say, well, let's do it. I, I ain't stopping you, you know. Um, you had no, you couldn't say no. You, your, your inclinations, your body did what it wanted to do. You know that song from, uh, what's her name? Uh, Selena Gomez. The heart wants what it wants or something like that. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that one? She loves that song. No, I don't, it's a nice one. I've heard of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's all right. The heart wants what it wants. You know, and that's exactly what is going on is that our, the evil, we, you know, our flesh wants it. But now we have the ability to say, no, not anymore. And a lot of us have done that. A lot of, you know, uh, some of you guys were alcoholics and you said, not anymore. And some of us were drug addicts, not anymore. You know, porno pornographic addicts, no longer. You know, whatever it was, we're, we had that ability to say no now. And how, and I think the last question I want to ask you guys is, all right, say, uh, the devil controls the world, evil's in every person, it's a wretched place, except here. What are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? All right, we know where evil came from, we know where it originated, at least we think we do. We know that it's nasty stuff, we know that it's disobeying God, we know that it's wrecking a lot of stuff, it's wrecked a lot of our lives. Some of our parents have been alcoholics, drug addicts, it just ruined them. And uh, thank God they're coming back around. What are we going to do about it? And I want you—I need you to answer it in a couple. What are you going to do about it in you? Let's start with you. What are you going to do about it in you? It'll just—it won't take very long. Just give me a minute. Give yourself a minute. All right. Evil exists in the world. Evil exists. All over the place, evil exists among us. There's no running from it. What are we going to do about it? Pray. Pray for it. All right. Can you do anything about it? Absolutely. 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 How can we actively begin overcoming in our lives? All right, let's start with you. Say you're the problem. Monica, you're the one with the issues. Okay, no, I'm not pointing you out, just saying. Like every one of us, even Elmer over there in the back, uh, how are you acti actively going to battle against this that seems to be destroying our world? Or maybe the devil. Just give me one way. How, how would you... To just change your ways by turning to God. Help us out. I mean, I, you tell us. I'm, I'm learning. You tell me. All right, change your ways by turning to God. <coughs> Thank you. That's what she did. Hey, seems to be doing well to me. Uh, anybody else? How would you actively start fighting against the evil in your own life? Maybe you have some skeletons in your closets you don't care to share about. Some of you guys like to smoke weed after church or something. Just kidding, hopefully not. For me it was a consequences. Uh what do you mean? Like for instance, 
You mean learning, learning to stop it? Yeah, like it was the consequences I had to deal with that made me change my mind. Okay. Or like, oh, like, okay, I, I can't be doing this anymore. Like, All right. Okay, so you, you experience the consequences. Yeah. And that's how you're able to overcome it. All right. How can you overcome it in your life? Uh, David has shared stories with me about his past. I'm not going to tell you guys right now, but you know, he's he he's overcome some things, and some obstacles, some major ones in his life. Yeah, he used to be uh, he used to be one of these slaves, one of his slaves, but not anymore. How do you do it? Hey, holy smokes! All right, and this this last question. And then we're, we're, we'll roll out, but I think it's one important. How would we start to fight against it? Start being on the offense towards it rather than the defense. Start, how can we start kicking this guy out, <laughs> out of control? All right, maybe this little tiny church out here. How can we start fighting against that shooting little bullets? Ding, 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 ding. Boom, boom, boom. All right, how can we start combating against it, let's say right here, let's say we just got like a square mile, what would be one thing you could do, we could do, to start fighting evil? We already know where it came from, we know it's wretched, we know it's in us, we know it's infecting every person out here, infecting every home. Are we called to do anything about it, or just let it, let it, just go ahead, do it, do your worst, you know? Just let the cancer take over, kill my friends, whatever you got to do. At least I'm saved. You know, is that how, it's, how it is? <clears throat> Seems like it sometimes, you know, for me at least. But what can we do to start fighting against it? Showing others that we genuinely care. All right. Or Evangelizing. Love. Yeah. Evangelizing. Like love. Making events. In the community. Thank you, Vance. Chip, do you have any ideas? Um, use your um, <clears throat> the the armor that God has given you. All right. How can we start combating evil in the community around us? Use your armor. Evangelize. Carl, you have anything? Combat evil in this community right here. Maybe even in our own church. Mm -hmm. Probably like along the lines of what Chip said, like using the gifts that God has given you. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think people are doing it all over. There's human trafficking going on in San Jose. Somebody set up a thing to save human traffickers. Combating evil. All right. There's people getting robbed. Somebody set up surveillance. I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's people, there's young kids struggling with church. Somebody has a Wednesday night Bible study with pizza, helping the little kids out. Anything. Something. But I think the important thing is you got to know there's an issue. You got to know that there is an answer. There is a way to fight back. We don't have to be subject to the devil's power anymore. I mean, it's hard to believe. Sometimes, but I mean, that's what he said. Jesus rose from the dead. Hey, you're free, bro. Let's, let's kill that fool, you know, take the devil out. Um, you have the ability to conquer him. And I, I've been praying for that in my own life. God, hey, look, if, he's, if the devil has any hold on me, let's, let's help me to kill that guy. Um, do you have them or do you And that, that's it. That's, you know, and I think that it's all, all of this studying the last month is totally pointless if you don't understand that you have the power to battle against it you have it you know some of us don't think very highly of ourselves but God does he thinks that's the reason why he called you he saved you is because he believes in you to be an effort against what the devil's doing and that's what we're trying to do here just with this little church you know I know it's brown and ugly you know not really it's nice it's better than it was but, you know, even as small as it is, we have the power in us, the Holy Spirit, to battle against evil. And I hope we can do that. Because um, first in our own lives and then in the lives around us, let's start 
if people are being treated unfairly, hey, we're going to step in and say, and not anymore, not while I'm here. You know, we're going to be, we have to bring justice. And so uh, that's going to introduce us into our next topic because uh, maybe we're struggling with what to do about it, but God has a plan at the very end and he's going to take care of it once and for all. And it's going to get a little tricky, but that's what we're going to study next. So uh, let's pray. I know I'm sorry I go late every single time. My goodness. Um, so let's pray, and I will get a clock so I know what time it is.